Hello, and welcome to this video on distillation. This is an overview of how a column still operates. Distilling is one of the most common means of separating different compounds or elements. As you can see, miscible liquids will separate into layers of mostly pure parts over time. This is the process that underpins distillation. This is vapor temperature, molecular weight, and concentration, as you can see in this picture. Although many options exist to separate compounds, such as alcohols, distillation is the most common. This is due to the ease of use and yield, but it is very expensive due to the cost of both heating and cooling the liquids involved. To understand why this is so, let's look at an example. Beginning with the mix and boiler. The boiler receives a mixture of compounds, such as an ethanol wash. This can be done via a constant supply on an industrial scale, or in a single amount on a personal level, much like you see here. This creates a container with a sealed environment containing the desired product and an unwanted product, waste in this case, or contaminants. As you add heat from the outside, the mixture enters a chemically excited state, just like boiling water. Like boiling water, this leads to the change from a liquid to a gas. This is vaporization, or a vapor change. The most easily excited compounds evaporate off first. In a simple wash of, for example, ethanol, this is mostly alcohol that will evaporate off first as a vapor. This will then be followed by the ethanol, which is a slightly heavier alcohol, and gradually more and more water will be evaporated off as a vapor. This occurs on a gradient, with ethanol increasingly difficult to excite, and so the temperature rises. Within a narrow temperature range, this is a linear relationship. Unfortunately, ethanol is highly miscible with water. This leads to both water and ethanol turning to vapour at approximately the same time. Distillation units address this through the use of cooling jackets and packing the column. To begin with the packing, it is often an open, non-porous mesh, like steel wool. This acts as a mild physical barrier that slows the rising vapour. This physical barrier has a significant impact on separating the two compounds. The more porous and the more densely packed the compounds in the column are, the more they will retard or slow down the progress of the vapour up the column. This has the effect of slowing down the movement of vapour, increasing the heat that is applied to it, and in effect allowing more time for the cooling effect of the cooling jacket to be applied. As the simplified two compound wash is slowed down, the effect of the cooling system begins to take effect on the compounds. The more excited the ethanol takes longer to be cooled then the less excited water takes to cool down. This leads to water condensing in the column before it gets to the top, and ethanol continues to rise as a gas vapour. At the same time, the pressure from heating the combination of water and ethanol from below makes the highly excited gas move towards the lower pressure area. As the mixture gets hotter, and more ethanol and water turns into vapour, the gas pressure goes up in the boiler. More pressure and heat means more ethanol can get higher in the column. Eventually it arrives at the top. This is in a cooler state than it began at, and as a consequence, it can begin condensing. At this point, the gas has cooled and will still be moving to a lower pressure area. This will lead to an equilibrium. As you can see in the picture, this means the gas will move down into the slope part of the column. This is often a valved copper tube. In large-scale operations, it's cooled to speed up the precipitation process. This allows for a faster turnover from ethanol vapour to ethanol liquid. As a result of the low temperature and low pressure, the gas precipitates into a condensate. This builds up on the slope and falls due to gravity. Eventually, this forms into a flow of distillate. This should be 95% ethanol. The 95% retention is called azeotropic distillation. In some industrial productions, this is not a perfect process and needs to be repeated to remove impurities or to improve taste, as seen with Smirnoff, the triple distilled, or absolute vodka, which is continuously distilled. Some of you will have seen distilled alcohol before, and some not. Here is the product of distilled alcohol, a wash before use, and a wash after distilling, and here is the final product. Now some important notes. You may wonder why some brands of vodka are labelled triple distilled, continuously distilled, or other variations of this. This is because they cannot remove all of the impurities with their setup. One way to fix this is to take a longer column. 
a longer column has more packing. This leads to a slower movement of ethanol to the top. A slower traverse to the top of the column means there is more time for it to be cooled. This leads to a greater separation of the contents of the mixture. In short, the longer the column, the more different factors affecting distillation will work. This creates a wider separation of compounds within the mixture as they come out of the top of the column. Consider this picture of three different columns. Knowing that each one can get more effective the longer it is, this means that the longest may be 100 meters in an industrial setting. This means that it will take a much longer time to distill an example beverage, like vodka, than it would in the first. Such an arrangement requires greater expense to both set up and to operate, with greater cooling and heating requirements. Compare this to the hypothetical first system, which may only be 10 meters in length. The requirement to heat, run, set up, and other variables is one-tenth the cost of the industrial size. To balance this, manufacturers either compromise size or layout. Taking the middle column as a 50 meter system, the manufacturer could just use the short system or fold, coil and bend it. This makes the system small in area, but retains the total overall length. Further, the system described here works on limited factors, heat, pressure, cooling and molecular weight. This is only a small selection of factors which affect the separation of compounds. In other videos, the mechanism and methods used here will be covered in further detail, and those variations used in the pot still. Thank you for watching. Please check with your local laws regarding the application of distilling if you choose to follow this up. Please post any questions, suggestions, or comments you may have below.